Tell us a little bit about yourself, Robert. I'm a, uh, one of those BOIs, born on the island. Uh, lived here all my life. Have uh, no intention of ever leaving Galveston because Galveston uh, is everything. It has everything that I need right here. Family, uh, great photography, uh, everything I need. So uh, um, I was educated here, uh, lived in the same neighborhood all my life, and uh, just love it. Um, what was it like growing up in Galveston in the 60s and 70s? Well, it, uh, it was perfect. You know, every other house had uh, children. And so that we had lots of friends. I uh, grew up in the Lindale neighborhood. And which is over by the ferry landing, right across from uh, the Galveston Yacht Basin in Lindell Park. And so we were out every morning. Um, it's not like kids nowadays. We stayed outside, especially in the summertime, just about all day. We had uh, swim bicycles, we'd ride bicycles, uh, we'd play football, baseball in the park across the street, we'd play wiffle ball. We came up with a game uh, using a cork from a wine bottle and made that into a baseball game, which was a lot of fun, called it cork baseball. Uh, we used to go to the field house at UTMB and we came up with a game called scatter ball where we'd turn all the lights off in the, in the uh, court and then turn the lights on briefly and throw them at each other. It was just a lot of fun. So uh, lots of ways to have a good time. Uh, we fished all the time, we crabbed. The uh, Corps of Engineers and the uh, um, Coast Guard base were not even built, the new building set. And so that was wide open area. So there was a canal that ran along Ferry Road that had a body of water in it, and it would empty into Galveston Ship Channel. So right where that brackish water met the water from the salt water of um, the Galveston Houston Ship Channel was a perfect place to fish. Uh, I came up with an idea to to build a, a catch for uh, shrimp and minnows and uh, so we could go by just putting um, a screen basically with two coat hangers crisscross and uh, a string and just pull it up and you could get all the shrimp and the minnows that you want to fish all day for free. So it was perfect. Then we'd catch uh, um, bigger mullet or we'd catch uh, croakers and then cut those up for bait for crabs and I mean it you know, kids with fish could uh, pretty much uh, uh, keep themselves busy all day and have a good time. So uh, we just had a great time. Easton Flats was fan fabulous. Uh, we used to explore uh, right behind uh, the gas station on the ferry road. There was an uh, opening where we could cross over in Easton Flats from my house. And uh, we would explore all the forts that were back there. And there were three forts that we got to. Um, also, the lagoon was great for fishing. We used to do uh, gigging at nighttime and fishing during the day. And, um, you know, it, just, it was an ideal spot to grow up. Talk a little bit about your education journey. Well, it all started uh, right here in Galveston at uh, Sacred Heart School. Uh, believe it or not, there used to be a uh, um, kindergarten through sixth grade there where I attended. And then went to the junior uh, campus of O'Connell High School then to O'Connell and uh, graduated from uh, O'Connell High School with a graduating class of 110 in uh, 1976. So I was 10th, so uh, actually I was 11th, so I still made the top 10. Um, I actually started my uh, interest in photography in 1975 at O'Connell High School. And uh, there was a teacher there by the name of Diana Dorman, and she was just wonderful and was so excited about photography and biology is what she taught. And I ended up being her TA, and it actually helped uh, build the darkroom there at O'Connell High School that they used for years and years. So we painted it and replumbed it and, and uh, helped put in trays and, and pl uh, plumbing and all kinds of stuff, uh, safe lights. And uh, that's really when it all began, when I was about uh, 16 or 17 years old at O'Connell High School. And you went to the University of Texas, took them horns. I did. So uh, after I graduated from O'Connell, um, actually there was an interim, it was a, a tough time. Uh, my mom passed away in 1976. And uh, I was scheduled to, to leave with my best friend, Al Marabella, to go to UT. And uh, when my mom passed away, I. I changed my plans and decided to help my dad uh, working and so uh, my brother was at school at, at UT and so I stayed home and 
help take care of him for a couple of years. And so I went to Galveston College and got all my basics and everything out of the way. And at the time I was actually a mechanical engineering major. So I did uh, two, and a, two years of mechanical engineering at uh, Galveston College. Then I went off to uh, UT after that and uh, uh, times were tough. First time I'd ever been away from home. Boy, that was scary. Living in a co-ed dorm for the first time. Uh, Jester was the name of it, a 14 story. It's like an apartment condo complex, and boy, that was a shock to the system. Living in the engineering floor, and uh, anyway, it sort of evolved. I, I decided uh, my father wanted me to be an engineer, but I uh, always knew that my passion was photography. So after one semester of bad, uh, just tough time, I decided to go ahead and go back to photography. So I switched back to the next uh, semester, and then I've been happy ever since, so uh, I'm stuck with it. What attracted you to photography? Um, photography is the best career that uh, I just can't imagine doing anything else. It, uh, it's exciting. It, uh, in my career as a photographer, um, you know, I've got to do some of the coolest stuff, meet some of the coolest people. So uh, in 42 years of shooting pictures, I've uh, flown in a hot air balloon. I've been on an 1877 square rigger out in the Gulf of Mexico in, in full sail. I've been on a nuclear sub. I've been on uh, uh, the P-38, the, the B-17 at the Lone Star Flight Museum, the uh, B-25, and flown all those planes. I've flown in Cessnas and helicopters offshore. I've photographed uh, uh, oil rigs and wind blades and uh, port, uh, everything at the Port of Galveston. I mean, just all kinds of stuff. Uh, space shuttle launch three times, uh, Statue of Liberty celebration, the tallest ship, wheat fields in Kansas, the Barrier Reef in Australia. Why would you want to do anything else besides have a career in photography? I, this is just what I'm all about. How big of a role did the Galveston Daily News play in your career? Okay. So uh, after I graduated from UT, I uh, had a job waiting for me at the Galveston News. Um, I had already begun working for them while I was uh, in Austin working for the Daily Texan and I uh, was writing a story on the Texas City Y waste pits and so I was actually a student at UT when that was published it was just a, a huge story uh, broke a lot of uh, um, it was just big about all the chemicals and stuff that things that have been dumped in the Texas City Y uh, for years and that was a front page story so that, that was big. Um, so when I came back, the Galveston News was, it was a perfect time. We had great people, an incredible team. Uh, Ann Bordelon, uh, Richard Fogley, Dave Hatz. Uh, I mean, uh, great photographers, great uh, designers, great writers, and great editors. And uh, we were quite a team, won lots of awards, and just had a good time. I mean, I, I think I was putting in 80 hours a week, but it didn't matter, because I loved it. I mean, I carried my camera everywhere. We had beepers at the time, not cell phones, but beepers. And I remember many a time something would blow up in Texas City or a ship at the port or something. And, and uh, with my contacts and things, and my father helping me and friends, uh, that I would be out shooting the pictures and then come back and my pager would go off when I'm pulling into the, the parking lot at the Galveston News and it would say, there's a big fire or a big explosion somewhere. Go, you know, we need you to go shoot pictures. And I'd already been out there for two hours <laughs> shooting pictures and then come back in. So uh, uh, anyway, things have changed a lot, but it was, it was a great experience. Describe your teaching role at Texas A&M. So uh, for 23 years, I've uh, taught photography at Texas A&M. It actually started here in uh, this space, uh, my office studio at 24th and Church, uh, and did that for about eight years before we uh, came up with a photo lab uh, at Texas A&M. Uh, I enjoy it a lot. I teach uh, digital photography now, which is uh, so much easier than using film. You don't have to process it. But uh, when I was here in my dark room, we'd actually process the film and print it here in my own dark room. So, uh, uh, but when you have 13 kids, it's pretty difficult with a small space. So uh, anyway, it's much easier using digital and computers. Uh, things are going really well. We just got published uh, my photojournalism class this past summer. Uh, we've had two stories uh, published. One uh, we did on uh, Winston Larison, who's a uh, um, plane mechanic, uh, airplane mechanic. And uh, it was published in uh, the Shoals International Airport um, website. 
And uh, next week it'll be published another story on uh, Winston Larison in the East End Historical District newsletter, which is kind of cool. And these, I, I teach basically uh, 13 students, er, a different class every week, uh, anywhere from three to six uh, weeks uh, summer. And the kids are 13 to 18 years old. So uh, it keeps me young, it really does. The, the kids love it. Uh, we get to do all kinds of fun stuff. I teach by doing and keep it simple is uh, what I'm all about. The kids, uh, they learn by making mistakes and, and learning from their mistakes out in the field. So not much uh, book time, not much classroom time. It's mainly field time, most of the, most of the class. It's important to you. So the big four, so God, family, Galveston, and photography. So those are what's most important to me. That's what, uh, um, that's what it's all about. Galveston is known for its interesting people, including quirky people. Does that make Galveston special, the fact that it's got weirdos, if you will? Uh, it has a lot of interesting characters. It definitely does, and that just adds to the ambiance and the, you know, everything about Galveston that's likable. So yes, there we do have some quirky characters, but uh, it just adds to it, and it's okay. <laughs>